Welcome to Demonstrating Biology. In this program, we'll be looking at some great demonstrations that relate to the human body. There's a variety of experiments, all devised to liven up your classroom and grab your kids' attention without the need for any fancy equipment. It's basically things you can find around the home. In this first section, we're concentrating on the digestive system. So it's off to the Science Museum in London, where Alexis Gilbert is going to kick things off with a bang. Now this is a brilliant experiment for showing how much energy is stored in sugar. If you get a spoonful of ice and sugar like that, you won't find it can release much energy. But what we've got here is a shower head. That's connected to a long tube so you can blow lots of oxygen inside the tin. Three candles in there, they're going to provide the ignition. And what we can do is show just how much energy is released in this sugar when we blow it up. So let's give it a go. First thing to do is plenty of ice and sugar on the shower head as much as you can fit. Light the candles to start with. Don't want these to go out, otherwise you're left with a very damp squib of an explosion. Most important bit of all, the lid. So the lid's on firmly, but not too hard. And we've got about 10 seconds now before those candles go out. So give it one big puff. Making one of these is really simple. All you need is a paint tin, a piece of hose, a shower head in the middle there, and a few bits of plasticine. What you do is you get your paint tin, you stick a hole in the side, you can use a drill or a screwdriver to do that, then thread the hose pipe through. In the middle, plonk the shower head onto the end of the hose pipe and you're almost ready to go. All you need now is your candles. One around each side of the middle, so you get a nice triangle effect there. And last of all, don't forget, you need your lid. Don't chuck that away, because that's going to be the key point of the experiment. It's important to make sure your lid fits really well. If it's at all buckled, then all your ice and sugar is going to come out the side and ruin your experiment. And one of the key things to remember when you're doing this experiment is this hole here with the hose pipe threads in has to be airtight. And now another way of doing that experiment is a bit simpler, just a blowtorch, a piece of hose pipe with a shower head on the end. And what we're going to do is light the blowtorch. You can use a Bunsen burner instead. Some icing sugar on the shower head. Cover it, not heat too much, just enough to cover the bottom. And all you need is big lungs. <gasps> this is a great demonstration for showing the whole process of digestion from gums right through to bums. We start obviously with the mouth. Here is the mouth, and we're gonna have a really healthy meal of baked beans, lovely. Frank versus chocolate biscuits, you Victoria sponge, lovely. The teeth start mashing up the food. So of course we're gonna add some saliva. It gets added in. Saliva contains some enzymes, and these start to break down the food. So we'll start crushing those up. One other item in the mouth which helps digestion start going is the tongue. Today, my hand is going to be my tongue. Whirl the food around, getting it into a round, something like that, bolus at the back of the mouth. Down the esophagus and on to the stomach. Stomach, big muscular bag. Already, it's starting to look a bit like vomit. This is a great time to take it around the class. A few more things get added in the stomach. We've got some stomach acid, enzymes as well. Lovely. There's still further to go, of course. It has to go past another sphincter and pass into the small intestine. Here is our small intestine, another bowl. The muscle releases, pushes the food. There we go. No longer looking like food. It's called chyme now. And once it's chyme, we're going to have to add some sodium bicarbonate. It neutralises the acid from the stomach. Also, some bile salts. These help start break things, breaking things down. Some more enzymes to help get that goodness out. Villi in the small intestine acts as a sponge to soak up all the goodness, all those nutrients in the blood. Squeeze it out into the blood. Lovely. Plenty of goodness in the blood. And now bile pigment's going to be added. It gives it that classic brown colour we all love. So it's starting to look a little bit more like poo now. And from the small intestine, it's going to move on to the large intestine. But in there, all the remaining water gets soaked out keep as much of it as possible in our body. Lovely, it's quite dry in there now. All of that waste product is gonna go into the rectum. The rectum is a big bag, just like this one. I've been saving up for quite a while now. I think it's time to go. Here's our toilet. Oh, oh squeeze, yes, squeeze with me. All done, and there we have it. From gums all the way through to bums.
While this demonstration may seem really complicated, it's not at all. You don't need very much equipment, and it's really quite simple. A potato masher to be your teeth. Three bowls, one for the mouth, one for the small intestine, and one for the large intestine. You need a sponge to act as your small villi in the small intestine. Lastly, a couple of buckets to act as your blood and your toilet. Make sure you've got some water in that one to add to the sound effects. A couple of plastic bags. These are going to be your rectum and your stomach. A pair of scissors to cut open the sphincter and you're ready to go. Six bottles of liquids. First one is saliva. All that is, is water. Second one is some washing up liquid, add it to some water and some red food colouring to get a little bit of spice, a little bit of excitement. Next, we have the acid. So it's just malt vinegar bought from a shop. Next one is sodium bicarbonate, which actually is just sodium bicarbonate added to water. Bile salt is washing up liquid, and that's all it is. And last but not least, we have bile pigment. This is just brown paint added to water to give it that lovely brown distinctive colour. This section is about the circulatory system. First off, we're going to Kidderminster, where Cathy Deakin is going to perform a tracheotomy in order to inflate a pig's lung. The pig is dead. Even so, this one is not for the faint-hearted. Although most of these demonstrations are very cheap and easy, this one requires a bit more effort. For more details on how to acquire this rich resource and its safe storage and handling, see the demonstrating biology programme, It Takes Goods. Find the trachea, which is the one with the ridged cartilages on, and I've got to just make a cut in it So the tube can go in. See if it's going to work. Yeah. See if it's going to work um, before I do anything else. And that's that's beautiful. That's a sensational inflating lung. And it's a good idea to put a bit of string in to hold it in. Otherwise, when you're moving things around, the whole thing can come out again. There's a lot of mess and a lot of um, heavy lifting and a lot of hassle to this, but I feel that every minute of it's worthwhile for the wow factor, which we find so difficult to give kids in science now. And the awe and wonder that they get when they see this is, is just really well worthwhile. So that's inflating very nicely. What we have is a trolley here that's simulating our vein or artery. Lots of red blood cells, some oxygenated, some deoxygenated. And all that's going to happen is we're going to cut ourselves, the blood's going to come rushing out, we're going to use a leaf blower to simulate this. <laughs> now, the great thing about this is you can see it all comes rushing out. You can, you can get the children to try and put them back in as fast as they can, and you will beat them at this. And this simulates how rubbish our veins would be if they didn't scab over. Unfortunately, I haven't got any children, I have to pick up the balloons by myself. Now, we don't have to pick all of those up again, so now's a good time to talk about scabs. So what we have here is a net to simulate a scab, made from fibrin and all those platelets. All we're going to do is drape it over the trolley, stick it down quite firmly, stick it down at the back, and you're ready to try again with the leaf blower. If we try to get rid of the blood cells out of the vein... <laughs> as you can see, the scab keeps the blood in and stops you bleeding to death. Now we're going to have a go at making our very own bruise. This isn't just about makeup though. It's really great for explaining how bruises form underneath the skin when the capillaries break. Not only that, you can talk about the pigmentation of the bruise and how it comes from the breakdown of haemoglobin over time. All you need is one of these, a colour wheel, easily available from a practical joke shop or a costume shop. And cotton wool, and we're going to get some yellow and apply it to the back of your hand. You can do this anywhere on your body, it's quite friendly. A little bit of green next of all, you can spread that around. So the green's inside the yellow. Next, some blue. Even less blue, just a tiny bit there in the middle. Again, smudging it round to make it look convincing. And lastly, a little bit of brown or red, just to give it that fresh look. That's right in the centre there. Smudge it out. And you're left with a quite impressive looking bruise. This final section is all about the human brain. Can you really believe your eyes? And how fast can you move when there's money at stake? 
pretty much everybody has a dominant eye and there's a little experiment here that proves it. All you need is a piece of card, which I am going to put a hole in the middle of. This is for you to look through in a second. Okay. So just snip that out there. Okay, Verity, I want you to just hold that up out in front of you. And if you look okay. at that pot over there, now keep focusing on the pot. Okay. I want you to start slowly drawing the card back towards you. Nice and slowly, that's, that's good. Enough. That's good, yep. Yeah. Now, which eye are you looking through? One, Two. both? Both. To keep going. Still both eyes? Yep, both good. eyes. Good, keep going now all the way till you're touching your nose with the card. Are you still seeing through both eyes? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't get that at all. <laughs> That's because, as I said, we're talking about eye dominance. Uh, what's happening there is Verity's right eye is dominant, and therefore she feels like she's looking through both eyes. And in fact, it's obviously it's only one because there's only one hole in the card. And that's kind of the point of this experiment. I guarantee that the kids will be amazed to find that they're not actually looking through both eyes, but they're actually looking through one, their dominant eye. Now here's a fun way to demonstrate reaction times and it's guaranteed to get the kids interested because it involves money. Verity, would you like to win a fiver off me? Yep, yep, definitely. Good, all you have to do is catch the fiver, but if you anticipate and go too soon, you have to give me a fiver. Okay. Fair enough. Yep. Fair okay, enough. I'm going to hold it up. I want you to put your hand sort of like that at the bottom edge. Just yep. say, yep, that's good. You ready? Yep. Oops. Okay, one more go. Okay. Fingers at the bottom there. Ah. There we go. I'll just stand on that so it doesn't go away. <laughs> now, basically, I was cheating there. Bit of a rotten trick, because I know it's physically impossible for you to catch that five pound note. Okay. See, the time that it takes the five pound note to fall that little distance is just slightly shorter than the time taken for your eyes to tell your brain what's happening, your brain to do a load of processing, then send a signal down your arm to your fingers to say, grab that money. Okay. So it's just not possible. It's a bit of a mean trick, a bit sorry. <laughs> Now, if you're going to do this trick, there are one or two things to bear in mind. Number one is to make sure your fingers are nice and dry so that the fiver doesn't stick, otherwise it is possible they could grab it. Number two is to make sure you don't use any bigger denomination notes because a tenner or a twenty, or if you're really flash, a fifty, are all that bit bigger and it's possible to catch them. And finally, I wouldn't normally advise laundering money, but in this case, it's worth giving it a quick iron first, that fiver, to make sure it's nice and crisp and falls through their grasp. What I've got here is just a cheap plastic mask, but I'm going to show you something that is guaranteed to amaze. If I turn the mask around, like this, now if I start to just move the mask slightly around, suddenly it appears as if it's coming out towards you. Even though you know it can't be because it's the back of the mask, therefore it's concave. Now what's happening is that your brain is registering there's a face there, and of course every face you know is convex. So your brain's telling you, this must be convex because it's a face. It's pretty complicated what's actually going on in your brain, but what it does tell us is that what we think we see is really just our brain's best guess. Well, that was demonstrating biology. We've had pig's lungs, explosions, amazing illusions. Hope you're going to find some of those ideas useful and enjoy trying them out in your classroom.